Hey guys and welcome back to another video from our Take Inter tutorial series. In this video, we'll take a look at the text widget. So the text widget is a way of taking multi-line input in Take Inter. It's basically the alternative to the uh, entry widget which it can only take a single line input. Of course, the text widget can do a lot more than just you know taking multi-line input. It has a whole bunch of features, a whole bunch of functionality, a lot of different options that can be used to like uh, turn the text widget into a full notepad or into some even something more complicated like a syntax highlighter. It's got tags, marks, uh, coloring systems. It's got for, like all kinds of formatting options, and it can s support all kinds of different uh, ways of input, like even uh, images and reading to files and you know. Uh, well, there's a whole lot of things, all right? So uh, I'm going to be discussing all these things over the course of a few videos. Uh, there was just so much content that we couldn't cover it in just one video, all right? So we had to split it up, all right? And we have some very particularly interesting content in the last video where uh, we're going to actually make a syntax highlighter. So I really advise that you, you know, follow this series because we'll be basically be taking the same thing and working on it uh, in each video, all right? So we'll have a finished end product by the time we reach the last video, all right? So yeah, um, that's it for our intro. So let's begin. I'm going to create a frame first, all right? Tiki.frame, self.master, all right? Self.frame.pack. I'm just going to create a few widgets right now in their basic states, all right? Then we're going to get into customizing them later on in this video. So yeah, self.frame text is equal to my notepad. Because that's what we're making here, basically, a kind of a notepad. All right, self.text is equal to tk.text. And self.frame. I'm just going to leave this in its uh, default state for now. Because this is fine just for, you know, creating it and taking a look at it. All right. Now let's run this, and there we go, here's our text widget. It looks pretty nice, we can take data here, uh, let's write something like this is some random data, All right, hello, there, we can see it has uh, things like warping as well, right, you can see that it basically warps around to the next line, so yeah, we'll take a look at all these options and more, so yeah. Let's begin with, right, uh, width and height. We can use this to change the size of the text widget. So 20 over here in the height means 20 lines, all right? Uh, and 50 over here means 50 characters. Let's run this. There we go. Personally, I like the default settings more, so I'm just going to remove that, all right? One more thing I want to show you is that uh, when you increase the size of the window, you know, like by dragging it and changing the size, you know, resize, resizing, uh, the text widget doesn't expand along with it. And when you're creating a notepad or something, uh, that isn't really right. So you can just uh, disable resizing if you want to. You know, resizable. I covered this in a separate video. Um, and yeah, like this. But I don't want to do that. I want to make the... Uh, window expand, right? I want the frame to basically expand and the text widget inside it to expand as well. So I'm going to do this, expand is equal to true, and fill is equal to tk.both. This basically causes the frame to expand along with the window. Uh, expand, this turns it to true, and fill um, tk.both basically uh, in allows it to expand in both the x and the y direction. If you only want the x, you can do this. If you only want it to expand in the y, you can do this, all right? But I want it to do in both, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy these over into the text widget now. It's necessary to do this in both because the text widget is inside the frame, all right? So if you put the expand on the text widget, there's no point because the frame won't change its size along with the window. And uh, putting it in only the frame doesn't really make sense either, all right? And let's try resizing now, all right? And there we go. It changes size along with our, you know, resizing. 
So yeah, that's our basic options done. Now let's take a look at actually you know putting in some functionality into our notepad. We'll take a look at three things: inserting text, retrieving text, and deleting text from the text widget. We'll also be discussing how indices work in the text widget along the way. So let's create some buttons first, all right? These buttons will be used to basically trigger uh, the various things that we're going to do, like retrieving text or deleting text. So yeah, the first one we'll take a look at is retrieve text, all right? So this is called this print, all right? It'll print the text out on screen. And command will give it um, print, all right? Okay, no, that's a keyword. So let's go with get text, all right? That, that's okay. Um, yeah, no parentheses, all right? And let's pack this in as well. I'm going to give this a side of um, left, all right? Uh, just for some basic formatting. I'm going to quickly duplicate this as well, all right? And just make a few more. All right. Button one, let's give them some names, all right? Oh, sorry, button two. Okay, and the first one is going to be print, all right? The second will be uh, insert, or actually delete. And the third will be insert, all right? And let's just remove these command parameters and these two for now. Okay, and what am I doing here is three, obviously. All right. Let's create the function get text. All right. Self. Okay, now we're going to retrieve the text and then print it out. So how do we retrieve the text? Well, we write self.text.get. All right. Now, uh, we type in two parameters here. Now, it's not very simple here because the text widget is a bit more complicated in how it handles indicing, all right? So basically, it's like this. 1.0. What does this mean? It means line 1 and index 0, or character 1. Now, uh, there's a bit of a difference in naming system here. Uh, over here, whatever number it is, it means that line. Uh, 1 means line 1, 3 means line 3, 4 means line 4, all right? But over here, it means index. So index zero is uh, the first character. Over here, if I wrote two, that makes it the third character. Five, that's the sixth character, or index five, all right? If I write here, 3.1. Line three, first index, or second character, all right? And then there are a whole bunch of special indexes as well. There's end, which means the end of the line. There's something like this as well, line start. This doesn't give you the position of the third, uh, I mean, third index or the fourth character. It gives you the position of the first character on line two. All right. So there are a whole bunch of things like this, and let's slowly take a look at them. All right. So here I'm going to do 1.0. All right. And end. So basically, what this does that it returns the data from line one all the way till the end of the uh, text widget. Let's run this. Okay, so I'm gonna write something like, hello world, all right? And I will then print it out. There we go. Now let me do this one more time. Okay, look at that. There's a space in the middle. Why is that? Well, you see, there's automatically a new line inserted uh, when you uh, print this out once, all right? So basically there's a new line character here at the end. All right, so how do we avoid that? Well, uh, we have the option of adding and plusing as well. It's quite strange, but you see, if we minus one character, all right, like this, we can basically uh, avoid reading that new line character. We can do things like this, actually. We can do minus one character, minus one line. Okay, actually, the full form is actually like this, cars, all right, but you can write C for a short form. Similarly, uh, for full form, it's lined, but you can just write L for a short form, right? You can do like a lot of things like this, all right? You can minus whatever you want, all right? Totally up to you. So we'll just minus one character here to avoid that new line character. Let's try that again. 
move this a bit here and print and print it again and look at that it um, it avoids that new line character all right so what else should we take a look at all right there's a, there's a lot more to indexing all right you can also plus by the way all right um, there are a lot of things you can take a look at uh, there's also stuff like 2.3 word start all right what does this mean well it means that um, uh, it won't look at the third index I mean or the fourth character it'll look at for the start of the word so basically if it's something like uh, this is this is line two imagine this is line two and I write hello all right uh, the fourth character or the, or the third index would be L right but this would return the start of the word so it would go and look for the start of the word which is H so yeah there's some pretty handy features in here and uh, you should write actually the link to the website in the description below the whole list of them because it's not possible to actually memorize all of these all right so yeah let's take a look at um delete now all right now let's call this one clear all right that's a pretty nice name i'm look i'm just gonna use this in a very general sense right now like uh print out everything delete everything all right, I'm also explaining how to be more specific. Again, you'll have to work, you'll have to work a bit for this yourself. All right. Okay, now what? Okay, same thing as before. And minus, or let's just go with complete and we'll delete the new line character as well. Otherwise it might cause problems. And what am I doing here? It's not get, it's delete. All right. So let's run this. And let's type some data. Hello world and sample data. All right. And let's click delete. And there you go. Okay, what's with that? Oh, right. The print statement. We don't include that. And by the way, I don't think I mentioned this earlier. Where to go? Uh, that you can write anything over here in any kind of for formatting. And you can print it out and it'll print out the exact same way you leave two lines here it'll uh, leave two lines when printing it out all right so whatever format you follow here is the same format in which it's going to print out this makes it pretty useful when you're re reading to and reading from files because it picks up all those new lines and all those formatting options like spaces and everything so it's a perfect representation all right pretty handy so insert now Command is equal to self dot insert. All right. And again, by the way, it's pretty obvious, but you can use indexing to change what you could delete as well. All right. Like this will delete line one to line two. Actually, how would that work? It's a good question. Let's try that out. Hello world. This is line one, sorry, line two. This is line three. This is line four. Let's delete that. Okay, look at that. It deleted only the first line. I suppose that's because it extends to line um, two. It doesn't, it doesn't actually include line two, all right? It's exclusive, I guess, all right? So yeah, let's just change that back to end. Anyways, self dot text dot insert right so in the insert function the first parameter is going to be the location of where we want to append the data onto all right so we'll write end over here because uh, right now at least i wanted to uh, add data to the end of the text widget and over here data to be inserted into the text widget all right let's run this and let me write some data in here. Hello world. Hello. Hi. And insert. There you go. It inserted the data into it. All right. And one more thing I actually want to take a look at. I'm pretty sure we can do this. Let's just run this now and do the same thing again. Hello world. All right. And all right. See, you can 
uh, use new lines as well in here and it'll de detect those, all right? So yeah, handy feature. Another thing you can do, which I think is pretty cool, is this, tk.insert. What does this do? Well, let me show you. Okay, so, hello world. Your line x, line y, all right. Okay. So I'm going to move the cursor over here, right? Keep your eyes on the cursor and I'll click insert. All right, look at that. And then I'll click over here again and over here and over here. So basically uh, what this does is basically returns the position of the cursor and then inserts the data over there, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, this has been taking longer than expected. So let's just quickly blitz through a few other options, all right? because I want to get this done at least within this video. So there's a wrap over here, all right? You can either do tk.none, all right? Which completely disables the wrap, all right? Watch this. And yeah, you can't actually access that anymore. Um, how do we access that? Well, we'll have to wait till the next video where we implement scroll bars, all right? And then there's car, all right? Uh, car and word. Basically, what car does is uh, breaks it uh, by character, all right? So if you write something, oh, you know what, let's go ahead and do that. All right, watch this. All right, now I'm going to write a word called hello world. All right, look at that. It split it around the character, all right? But now I'm going to do tk.word, all right? And then I'm going to do the same thing, hello world. So basically, it uh, split the it didn't split the word the word all right. It uh, basically moved the entire word down there. So you you may want the setting all right. Uh, besides this, there's the undo all right. This enables undo uh, inside the text widget. So I write hello here. I'll copy it, cut it. Wait, doesn't no need to copy it. I'll just undo now. Control Z and there you go. It's back there. Uh, okay. And then there's spacing, all right? Spacing one. Uh, this is the spacing above a line. So you can do something like four. Spacing two. This is the spacing. Uh, okay, this one is a bit complicated. Let me just explain spacing. Spacing three is the amount of space after a line. Uh, let me just put that down to four, actually. All right. And the reason behind the increased size over here is because we increased the spacing, all right? That's why it's sort of adding extra padding between the lines, uh, inflating a size. Okay, I want to show you spacing two now. I'll set this to a low value, all right? Now, uh, what is spacing two? I'm going to explain that. Just watch, all right? All right, now, now look at this. Uh, you can see the distance between these two lines, These this warped line, is less than the distance uh, between these two. So basically, spacing two is the distance between two uh, warped lines, right? Um, it's basically, it creates a sort of distinction. Like you can see clearly see that there's a, a difference between this line and this line. So you can sort of tell that this is meant to be part of this line right here, all right? So it's, it's just meant to basically create that sort of effect, all right? But yeah, that's, uh, that's, how, what, that's what spacing two is. So that's the end of this video. We still have a lot more content left to cover. We've still got tags, marks, uh, maybe a little bit of filing, images as well. And of course, in the last video, because we're going we're gonna to have three videos, in the last video, we're going to make entire syntax highlighter. And we'll be looking at some really cool stuff along the way, all right? So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. And see you in the next video.